in this video, we are gonna do a bunch of multiple choice problems that relate to infinite series. Um, this would be great review for the BC Calc exam or if you're just in a Calc 2 class. Um, so I'm gonna do nine problems per video and I think there's gonna end up being eight videos in kind of like this series. So let's get started. All right, number one, the Taylor series for a function f about x equals zero is given by the sum from one to infinity, negative one to the n plus one over the quantity 2n plus 1 factorial, x to the 2n, and it converges for all real numbers x. That's good, because otherwise we'd have to do the ratio test on that, and we don't necessarily want to do that in every multiple choice question. If the fourth degree Taylor polynomial 4f about x equals 0 is used to approximate f of 1 half, which just means write out a bunch of terms uh, until you get to the fourth degree and then plug in 1 half, uh, what is the alternating series error bound for the approximation? All right, so I'm going to do exactly what I said. We're looking for alternating series error bound, which is just the first term left off. I just need to figure out how many terms to use. Um, we want fourth degree Taylor polynomial, so that means uh, looking at the series, which has x to the 2n, if I plug in n equals 1, I get x squared. If I plug in n equals 2, I get x to the fourth. So plugging in 1 and 2 will give me a fourth degree, so I'm going to do that and simultaneously plug in 1 half. So that'll look like this. So I plugged in n equals 1 and n equals 2. Now, alternating series error is the first term left off, so I need to now plug in 3 um, for n. I've already plugged in 1 half for x, so that'll give me minus 1 over 7 factorial, uh, 1 half to the 6th. So this term right here, well, the magnitude of this term, I should say, the magnitude of the first term left off is... Uh, the alternating series error, so the answer to this question is C. All right, let's take a look at the next one. Power series from 1 to infinity of quantity x minus 5 to the n over 2 to the n, n squared has a radius of convergence of 2. Which of the following values of x uh, can the alternating series test be used with this series to verify con convergence at x? All right, so I need an alternating series I need to be in the interval of convergence. Uh, let's work that out. So the center is five, right? Because it's the quantity x minus five. So whatever makes that zero is our center. And then the radius we're just given is two. Again, if that wasn't given, we'd use the ratio test. It's kind of, you don't, uh, no, that's a lie. I was gonna say you don't use the ratio test much on multiple choice questions, but uh, you kind of do. Um, all right, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna draw the interval. So my interval has to go five and I can go two in either direction. So I'm at five, I can go two this way to seven, two that way to three. Um, I don't know what's happening at the end points. I'd have to test that, but this is a multiple choice question, right? Um, so I have to be between three and seven. And if you look at the answer choices, two, zero, and negative one aren't in the interval of convergence. So the series doesn't even converge there. So those are out. Um, now I need to figure out, I need an alternating series, right? If I'm going to use the alternating series test. Um, so that's going to depend on this x minus 5 quantity. If I plug in a number bigger than 5, for example, anything uh, between 5 and 7, x minus 5 will be greater than 0 and I don't get an alternating series. So at this point, I know that 6 is not the answer. So I do know that 4 is the answer, but like why? So on this interval x minus 5 is definitely less than 0, right? Just like pick a number, 4. 4 minus 5 is negative. There you go. So we will get an alternating series. It's in the interval of convergence, so we know it does converge. So that's going to be our answer. And so we're going with B. All right, let's look at the next one. Which of the following statements about the convergence of the series 1 over the natural log of n plus 1 is true? All right, so my instinct is going to tell me, and also I've just done a million problems like this, this definitely diverges, um, because it's it's like, it's a little bigger than 1 over n, and 1 over n is like the gold standard of uh, diverging series. But let's look at the options here. So the first one says that our series converges by comparison to 1 over n. That's not actually possible, because 1 over n diverges, you can't compare anything with it and, and conclude that it converges. So that is not going to work. Option two converges by comparison to 1 over n squared. 1 over n squared does converge, so that's a possibility. I still think this diverges, though. 
Um, diverges by comparison with 1 over n. Yes, that's what I think the answer will be. Diverges by comparison to 1 over n squared. 1 over n squared converges. You cannot compare anything to it and conclude that it diverges. So this is out. And now I'm thinking the answer is C, but I kind of want to do like some work for that. So what I'll do, I'm going to graph the natural log of n plus 1, and I'm going to graph n. So here's natural log of n plus 1. That's just natural log, but shifted 1 to the left. Um, and now I'm going to graph n. And we can see that for n greater than 0, or uh, 1 and above, I guess, uh, n is above that. So we know that the natural log thing is less than n. Now when I take reciprocals, I also change the inequality. So 1 over the natural log of n plus 1 is greater than 1 over n. 1 over n diverges, therefore 1 over the natural log of n plus 1 also diverges. So our answer is C. It's really helpful to go into a problem like with a gut instinct on whether or not it converges or diverges. If you don't have that, then uh, it's a lot harder. So I thought this would diverge. And honestly, if I were doing this, I wouldn't have done any of this work. I would have just like picked C and kind of moved on. And that comes with uh, practice and also a willingness to sometimes just be wrong because you went with your gut. All right, number four. Which of the following series are conditionally convergent? All right, so we're going to need to know what conditionally convergent means. So conditionally convergent means that the series converges when it alternates, but it does not converge when it does not alternate. So we need to look at each of these series and decide when we take the absolute value of the nth term, do we get a convergent series? If the answer to that is yes, it's absolutely convergent and we like exclude it. It can't be conditionally convergent. If the answer to that is no, so we take the absolute value. If the answer is no, then we look at the alternating series and decide if it converges. So looking at all of these, based on the alternating series test, all of them converge when they alternate, right? Like uh, the, they alternate, the limit of the nth term is zero and the terms decrease in value. That's all that we really need. So all of them do converge when they alternate. So now the question is really, do they converge when they don't alternate? So let's, uh, let's look at this. So the first one, I take the absolute value, I get one over n, that's the harmonic series that diverges, but I do know that negative 1 to the n over n is the alternating harmonic, which famously converges. So that is conditionally convergent. Number two, the absolute value is 1 over n cubed. That's a p series where p is equal to 3, which is greater than 1. That diverges, uh, sorry, that converges, converges. And since it converges, this thing is absolutely convergent, so it's not conditionally convergent, so this won't be the answer. And then for number three, when I take the absolute value, I get 1 over n to the 1 half. p is equal to 1 half, less than 1, diverges. So this is a candidate. It could conditionally converge. And we already know from the alternating series test that this does converge. So it converges when it alternates, does not converge when it has the absolute value. That's conditionally convergent. So the answer here is going to be 1 and 3, so C. All right, next problem. Which of the following series converges? for all real numbers, x. All right, so this one, in my mind, is like a classic uh, multiple choice conundrum. I don't want to do the ratio test on all of these, and I think probably the, the like, quote unquote right way to do these is to use the ratio test. So instead, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna look at all of them and decide, do I think they converge uh, for all reals? Um, so I'm looking across the board, and the one that I noticed that sticks out the most to me is D which has an n factorial in the denominator, and I know of the series I've memorized, e to the x has n factorial in the denominator, and e to the x converges for all reals. So can I look at d and rewrite it in terms of e to the x? So e to the x is x to the n over n factorial. If I look at d, it looks to me like I just replaced the x's in e to the x with e times x. So I think d is actually just a series for e to the e x, which I think is a weird, hard thing to say, but I think that's what it is. So this will converge for all real. So that's definitely my answer. But what if I wanted to do like a slightly better job? So I'm gonna have to like eliminate some of the possibilities. Well, a, c, and e, if you look at them, plug in x equals one, and we get one over n, which diverges. We get one over n to the one half, which diverges. We get n factorial over e to the n, which definitely diverges because n factorial just grows so fast. So if I let x equal 1, they all just diverge. So I can eliminate those by choosing a specific value. That would leave me with b, 
which I don't know, maybe I'm not entirely sure of, so I would then use the ratio test on that. So I would do the ratio test, get this. This only converges if the absolute value of x is less than one, which means it will divert. Well, uh, you can test the endpoints and see it does converge at one, whatever. Definitely it diverges when the absolute value of x is greater than one, so that couldn't have been my answer. All right, new problem. Which of the following statements about the series from one to infinity, one over two to the n minus n is true? All right, so again, I'm gonna look through uh, the answer choices and see if any of them like don't make any sense. Series diverges by the n-term test, that's um, like, that could be a conclusion you could draw about something. Series diverges by limit comparison to the harmonic series, that is another thing you could conclude about something. Maybe not this series, but in general you could. Um, converges by the n-term test is garbage. Nothing can do that, so that is not a possibility. Converges by limit comparison to the geometric series. All right, so I eliminate one, and I just have to figure out, like, what do I think is happening? Well, this series looks a lot like 1 over 2 to the n to me. And the reason I think that is 2 to the n grows much faster than n, so I can actually just eliminate the n and say this is basically uh, 1 over 2 to the n with like a little bit of shifting. Um, or I could just do the uh, limit comparison test if I needed to. But the key is with the multiple choice, you want to like make the conclusion without actually doing the work in most cases. I mean, this limit would be 1 if you want to see the work on that. So I mean, that's the answer. If you want to see the work, here it is. You have to use L'Hopital's a couple of times, but again, it's better to just like look at it and know. All right, next up. Which of the following series converges to two? All right, so we're finding the sum of a series, which means we're kind of limited. Uh, basically, looking at these, they're gonna have to be geometric if we can find the sum. So option one is not geometric, so I can't really find the sum, but even better, if I take the uh, limit, as n approaches infinity of two to the, nope, sorry, two n over n plus three. That's gonna be two, which is not zero, which means this thing diverges. So it doesn't, not only does it not converge to two, it doesn't even have um, a sum. I think they wanted you to just find the limit and get fooled by that, but we're not gonna do that. All right, so two and three are geometric, let's find their sums. All right, so two. Uh, the first term is negative eight over negative three, so eight thirds over one minus the ratio, the ratio is negative one third. So minus and then negative one third. So this is going to give me eight thirds over four thirds, which is two. So that's an answer. And then, I don't know, let's do three. So this is like a, a more standard one. When you plug in zero, you get one. So the first term is one over one minus one half, which is definitely two. So the answer to that one is definitely uh, two, so that means we got two and three. Our answer is E. All right, next up. Which of the following series converges? Which is, you end up answering that question a lot. It's like every series multiple choice question is actually like three multiple choice questions because you have to do three different series. Um, all right, let's look at it. So the first one is one minus one plus one minus one. So I'm gonna say uh, the nth term test tells us the limit of the nth term is not zero, so that diverges. Uh, for the second one, uh, so let, I guess I'll cross it out, uh, one plus one third plus one fifth. So this is essentially, I know it's not exactly it, but you kind of have to get used to this idea. This is basically the harmonic series, just shift it around. Um, if you, if you don't like that, you could limit compare it to one over N, um, and you'll get a limit of one half, which is positive and finite. So they do the same thing. I look at this one though, and I think that's just the harmonic series where somebody kind of messed around with it. So that's definitely gonna diverge. And then the third one I look at, and it's one, one third, one over three squared, one over three cubed. This is just geometric with R equals one third, and one third is less than one, so this converges. Um, so the question was converges, so the answer is three only or C. All right, next question, last one in this video. Which of the following series converge? So again, it's like just so many questions in one. Um, all right, so I want to look at these and just have a sense. Like I look at number one, and I think factorials grow incredibly fast, faster than anything else really. So I think that's going to convert. So I would say one definitely converges. Uh, two, for like the opposite reason, the factorials in the numerator, that's going to definitely diverge. And then three looks to me like it's basically just n over n cubed, which is one over n squared, which is a P series that converges. So I'm gonna say that converges. So in my mind, I already think I know this answer. 
now I'm gonna like write down some work for you. But the way I just described it is how you really wanna do it. So I solved it in like 25 seconds and now I'm gonna do the work and it'll take forever. All right, so option one. I would do the ratio test if I had to, but I'm thinking this definitely converges. Here's the ratio test, which gives me um, eventually eight over n plus one, so that's zero, that's less than one, converges. Um, for number two, I said I think there's no chance that this converges because the factorial is now in the numerator, but, uh, so I'm thinking no, here's the work I would have done, and then this gives me the limit n approaches infinity of n plus one, which is infinity, that does not converge. And then option three, I'm thinking converges, and what I would do is this. So you have to get used to excluding things that aren't the dominant term, right? In the numerator, we have an n and a plus one. You go to infinity, that plus one does not matter. So you can basically just cross it out and say n plus one is basically n. And then in the denominator, we have n, which is still n. n plus two, if you go to infinity, that plus two doesn't matter. n plus three, if you go to infinity, that plus three doesn't matter. So it's really just n over n times n times n, which is one over n squared which converges, and so three is gonna converge. If you need to do work on that, I would do the limit comparison test, but I'm not gonna do that because I think I know the answer. So I think the answer is going to be D. All right, so I'm gonna stop this video here. I'll be back in part two, where I'm gonna do nine more questions. This looks like it's gonna be a really long series of videos, but anyway, I hope you found this helpful and good luck.